I'm Nate Eaton here at Wood Funeral Home. Brian Wood is the owner of Wood Funeral Home, and I thought it would be nice to sit down with Brian today and discuss uh, the funeral business, I guess you could say, the, the, the business of death because of the news out of the Downard Funeral Home in Pocatello. And we'll make it clear up front that Brian is not associated with them or speaking on behalf of them, but there sure are so many questions, Brian, this week after these 50 fetuses and 12 bodies were found inside the funeral home in Pocatello. I guess the first question I have for you is, what is the process when somebody dies and the body is turned over to, to the funeral home? So first of all, they let us know specifically whether they're planning for cremation or for burial. And uh, basically that will tell us what we need to do with the deceased when we get back to the funeral home. Um, if they're planning on having a viewing, whether it's burial or cremation, that, that body will need to be embalmed, uh, a chemical process to treat the body. Uh, so it will be preserved and restored. Um, but if they're not having a viewing, that body has to be refrigerated in a temperature controlled area where there's no further breakdown of the body. So that's actually a law. The state of Idaho requires a human body within 24 hours that a funeral home has has them under their care to either be refrigerated or embalmed. Is that the same law for a, a fetus, like a, a, a baby, a stillborn or a yes, baby? Yes, um, once we're to the point where um, that, that person would need a stillbirth certificate and we'd have to go through the normal process with our coroner uh, for cremation or for burial, then it would be. Okay, so. so let's say you take possession of the body, you've got 24 hours to embalm or uh, put the body in the refrigerator, what would be the purpose for putting it in the refrigerator? So that body would just remain as, as they were at the time of passing, basically so that body would not break down over time. And is that if somebody wanted it cremated eventually? Yes. Or, yes. The, or an immediate burial um, where they're, they're planning on no viewings, they're just meeting at the cemetery with their loved one casketed and they have a simple service. So either way, whether it's a burial or cremation, as long as there's no viewing, then that body would need to be refrigerated rather than embalmed. One of the things that we've heard about this story is that there were complaints during funerals that there was a, a putrid smell in the funeral home. If, if a body was refrigerated, would there be a smell that could you know, emit out of the, the fridge? It's very possible, depending on uh, the nature of the body when we receive them into our care. So we've had some calls where that person has passed away and they've been gone for several days before anyone knows or is notified. Uh, and so a neighbor will start to smell something or, f or a neighbor will see the mail stacking up on their porch and then they'll have a police officer come and check on them. And if they've gone to a certain point where they've already started to decompose, then yes, it's very hard to contain that. And so often we get special permission from our coroner to speed up the cremation process. Usually it takes about a week before we can do a cremation. Sometimes we are to the point where the coroner authorizes us to immediately cremate the person when we arrive at our funeral home because of that. But before uh, you cremate, the coroner has to sign off on it. Yes, uh, but a few times he's given us a verbal where he says, yes, in this case, you can go ahead and do this immediately uh, for the sake of your customers and, and your staff and for, you know, for safety to immediately do that. But yes, answering your question, I mean, there is a possibility of that. You know, that, that's one of the benefits of having this building off-site from our funeral home is if we do have a case where they've been gone for a while, we would often bring them to this building where we're not servicing funerals and things in this building. Yeah, we should mention we're not in the actual wood funeral home. The funeral home, we're in the cremation building. Yep. Crematory? Yep. So we call this our cremation center. Okay. We have a crematory at each of our buildings. The one at our downtown office is actually in the funeral home, uh, in the garage. Uh, here at our Ammon location, we've decided to have it be a separate building, and it's, it's been a beneficial in, in those scenarios. And the number of people choosing cremation, is it still on the rise? Yes. Um, Idaho is really close to the nationwide statistic, which is right around 50%. I think it's somewhere between 50 and 55%, and we're right in there. So let's talk a little bit about cremation, because when somebody chooses cremation, you, there's really no guarantee that when you get the ashes back that you can guarantee it was their loved one. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have different ways of trying to be transparent so that they can rest assured that this is their loved one. You know, um, we'll, we'll be taking you on a tour here shortly and kind of showing you some of those things. Also, there's a few things that accompany the remains during the cremation process that stay with them from the beginning all the way into the urn that identifies who they are. So, I, I mean, as far as we practice, we do all of those things to try to ensure and let the families know, yes, this is your loved one, but you can, you know, be dishonest in, in any career, including our funeral industry. And I'm not casting any doubt on your business. I didn't want it to sound like that. I, th the reason I present that question is because there have been questions raised about this funeral home that, oh, I got back four vials of ashes and I don't know if they were my loved one because my loved one was found in the funeral home. Right. Um, 12 bodies, 50 fetuses. I think the average person watching, and I know you don't have the inside track or anything, but, but how, how could that happen? You know, it's hard to say. Uh, I know other funeral homes, specifically in Pocatello, are involved with that donation process through ISU more often than we are. Yeah. So I, I don't really know specifics on, on that process. And once they're finished with the donation process, uh, when they're returned to the funeral home, what happens at that point or where they're stored. So, you know, it's really hard to, to, to talk about that where we don't have a lot of experience in that. We care for our at-need families. So basically, when someone passes away, we help them immediately. Um, if they have a donation, we pretty much pass that donation on to, we go through a funeral home such as Downard, who took care of those that went into the donation process. Um, more commonly, we would take them through the University of Utah, um, who has a little bit bigger program, and they allow uh, different cases that ISU wouldn't allow. So if I say I want my body to be donated for research, to ISU and I live in Idaho Falls and you happen to come and pick me up, you would need to work through a f Downard or whoever was working with the university, right. whoever had that arrangement. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the fetuses because I, I think that a lot of people assume maybe you know babies that are seven or eight months, nine months in the womb, but, but this could be children, you know, babies as young as 20 weeks. Right. Um, and and how, what's the process with you guys when you have a situation like that? It's very common, believe it or not. A lot of people don't realize how often people are losing a child, uh, usually through stillbirth. Um, we're, we're at Ermac and Mountain View, I mean, a few times a month helping families. Um, but basically the process is we, uh, um, not to put in a plug for us, but we uh, and many funeral homes offer a complimentary service for families going through this experience. So we'll go to the hospital, we'll let them know we offer complimentary burial or cremation services for your baby and uh, kind of give them the, you know, what the benefits are for both. Um, then the baby comes back just as, a, you know, a full body. We don't bring a cot to the hospital, we actually bring a blanket. We'll take care of their, their baby in a blanket and, and go out the back entrance of the hospital. And then they go into our ref refrigeration with the rest of our deceased. So, so we pretty much follow the same process we do with any of our normal cases. The family comes and sits down, they meet with us. We talk to them about if they want a public service, you know, for the sake of people being able to just express condolences, if they want a graveside service, if they just want a simple cremation, and then we provide them an urn. So we pretty well just follow the same you know, path that we do with most of our families. Do you worry that situations like this put a black eye on the funeral industry? You hope not, you know, um, being a funeral home that's been here since 1911, we've really tried to, sh to gain the trust of our community over several generations. And so our hope is that we can continue to be a funeral home that the, the community trusts. And you know, when a funeral home makes bad decisions or you know, their care is lowered, um, we just really try to, to, to show that, hey, you know, of, of course there's gonna be examples in every industry where um, somebody isn't operating at, at where they ought to be, but we're always going to be. Your reputation precedes you at, at, here at Wood, and most most businesses are like that. And For sure, so, uh, you have a pretty good reputation. Is there anything you want to add? Anything you want to clear up that maybe you've seen in the coverage or questions you've been asked over the past few days from, you know, people on the street? 
Um, I, I just think it's very important to be as transparent with all of your families as you can, the families that we serve. Um, you know, I, I know that there was a time where when someone chose burial, it was a lot easier for families to be involved and, and be, in the, be part of that process. They'd come in and help dress at times. They'd come in and help with hair and sometimes the cosmetics. Whereas cremation, <clears throat> it's really taken a while for funeral homes to figure out how to properly serve those families. And, and that's one of the reasons we built this building is so that they could be present. Sometimes families would like to actually see their loved one placed into the crematory. That's one of our levels of transparency so that they don't have to wonder, is this really grandma that we're getting back? Well, they'll, they'll actually watch us place her into the crematory. The, this room is, we'll, we'll go through a tour here in a minute, is wired for them to actually turn it on, you know, and they can be here for the whole process. Um, so I think it's just very important to, uh, for the sake of trust and transparency to just always allow them to be as involved as, as they want to be. And especially at a time of life where you're already emotional, you're already distraught in most cases, you, you want that so it can help with the mourning process. For sure, yeah. Brian Wood, thanks so much. Wood Funeral Home, we appreciate you talking with us today. Thanks a lot.